live to Florida, where a well-respected pediatric dentist allegedly makes children scream in pain. Jacksonville dentist Dr. Howard Schneider under fire amidst claims he performs extremely painful dental procedures on children without anesthetics that he has been disallowing parents from coming back into the treatment room with their children and claims that he has been doing this for decades, all allegedly to satisfy his, quote, sadistic appetites. Photos showing little children with bruises, swollen lips, unnecessarily removed teeth, some of it even caught on video. Is this true? We have the video. He has scratches all across his face. We do not strip them. Or the teeth were not put up under the gum. They were just stuck there. The images of the bruising and the biting of the lip. If you don't treat kids, they're going to bite their lips. Abuse allegations and the possibility of Medicaid fraud. I am very pissed off about it. You're pissed off well did you see the video liz please show the video where one of these moms or a relative of this child tries to put the dentist in a chokehold for attacking her children look at this i think this is at the dentist's office yeah somebody's got to help him in look at this video listen play the video liz we almost didn't play it because it's so upsetting the Ma video of Ma 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 what? 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 Okay, take it down, take it down. Please take it down, Liz. Please, please. Maybe I'll be able to, to watch it in a moment, but I can't watch it right now. I am beside myself over this. You know, the dentist that we go to, I go back there with the children. There are no walls. Everybody, all the children are in the open, and you can see what's going on. I, wh what happened? And you know, when the children come out and, and they go, Mommy, it hurt. Well, of course, parents think that, of course, the dentist can hurt. They have no idea, according to reports, what's really going on. But with me right now, Two lawyers, Gus Saris, lawyer for some of these victims, John Phillips, lawyer for other alleged victims of this pediatric dentist, and with me also is Crystal Perrette, mother of one of the alleged victims. Oh, okay. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, please, Liz, I can not only take that in very small doses. I want to go first to the mom of one of these alleged victims, Crystal Perrette. Ms. Perrette, thank you for being with us. What happened? Um, the beginning was just to take in for a routine checkup, and from there is when it just went down. What the, happened? In August of 2013, he decided to cap every tooth in Hunter's mouth except for his bottom tooth. Why? And then, Why? Uh, he never. I never got an explanation. I knew he was going to cap a couple of them because he said that they were bad. So instead of fixing some of the ones that were bad, he just covered them up. Okay, now wait a minute. Why am I seeing a child that looks like he was passed out? Is that Hunter? What happened? The, the picture of him in the hospital? Yes. That is from the aftermath. That is when he was getting infections, the abscess, from his teeth being capped. Okay, I think I'm missing part of the story. You go in for a routine dental exam. The next thing you know, this doctor, Dr. Schneider, is going to cap every tooth in your son's mouth, and he ends up in the hospital. Uh, Ms. Perrette, do you have a lawyer? Yes, ma'am. Which one is your lawyer, Sarah's or Phillips? Phillips. Mr. Phillips, let me go to you first, and I'll come back to Mr. Sarah's. Mr. Phillips, John Phillips, joining me out of Florida, what are the allegations? The allegations are Medicaid fraud, essentially, is what we believe is going on here. 
Dr. Schneider and other dentists all across the country get paid for every single procedure per tooth. And it's amounting to, for Dr. Schneider, $4 million in the last few years of profit that we, the taxpayers, are paying for. And he's taking these children and doing unnecessary procedures well, and doing I'm, it. I'm, I, I'm less concerned, Mr. Phillips. Uh, with me, Crystal Perrette, the mom, John Phillips, the lawyer. I'm less concerned with the Medicaid fraud, although I know that's wrong, with the kid being strapped in a seat screaming amidst allegations that this doctor, Howard Schneider, performs unnecessary procedures without anesthesia. Gust Saris, attorney for some of the other alleged victims, what can you tell me? What is this about? Thank you, Nancy. It's, it's about the fact that every person who's a victim has, has been at this office They've been separated from their parent. They've been told that you cannot go back. Mm -mm. They've been insisted. They've been told they're a bad parent. And then what he did is he would do any procedure he possibly could to maximize his reimbursement, including procedures without any anesthesia whatsoever. Oh, dear Lord in heaven, it's like a worse nightmare. You know, people have horrible fears of going to the dentist. And this is exactly why. Do you think I'm bad? That's what he did. I mean, any time a dentist tells you you can't go back there with your children, that's just a wave a red flag in front of every parent's face, right under your nose. Uh, we're talking about a doctor out of Jacksonville, Florida, Dr. Howard Schneider, and... He apparently, according to claims, has been performing pediatric dentistry on children with no anesthesia motivation, apparently, to just make money off them. But a, a thing I don't understand, I'm reading through this very lengthy complaint filed by attorney Gust Saris, and I was especially intrigued, is one way to put it, by the claims about a child named B. Brother F. Frank, B. F. You don't have the children's names in here. And you say she, the little girl, went in and her teeth were fine, and she ended up being strapped to something you call a papoose board and had multiple teeth pulled? What? Yes, it's... Uh... It's a board that basically looks like if you've ever seen uh, Hannibal Lecter, what they would put him in so that they can actually cross and tie the arms down or keep them tied at the side, and it binds their legs, feet, head, chest, and torso itself. Oh, dear Lord in heaven. All right, to you, McDonough, what's your defense of this guy? Well, I mean... First, you know, anybody can file a lawsuit. You've got four, four different people that said this, but you've got a doctor or a dentist that's been board certified for 40 years. You've got to imagine there's been probably 100 different employees through there, thousands of patients through there, and now in his late 70s, this is the first time you hear of some of these types of claims. It, 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 it's, it's suspect for sure. It's suspect. I'm not really sure why you're saying that, uh, but well, I'm I guess... saying this because why wouldn't this have come out earlier if he was doing this? And let me just say this. I know it is upsetting hearing a child scream like that, but I've heard just as bad on the playground when some kid doesn't get their way. I know my own I child haven't. one time... Well, let me tell you this. I had my own child one time who could not even keep down a sip of water, took him to the doctor. All he did was get a shot. He was six or seven at the time, screaming like bloody murder. I mean, kids scream. Okay, who likes going really, to the dentist? Really... Oh, really? Was he strapped down to a papoose board at the time well, they had four well, teeth well, extracted with no anesthesia i'm not saying no anesthesia and i'm not sure that's the case but let me just say what i understand oh, you're not sure boards, that's true all let right. me tell you this. Well, I, no, I'm not. I'm not sure. It's just been a complaint. There hasn't been discovery done. But as far as those boards go, what I understand is that at times when a procedure has to be done, you need to make sure the child doesn't move their arms or legs, and it's for their own I've protection and safety. I've never in my life heard... Oh, hold on. I know that you two have your JDs. Let's talk to somebody that has an MD or, better yet, a DDS. Dr. Grace Yum, pediatric dentist. Dr. Yum, thank you for being with us out of Chicago. You know what? I've never had a dentist in my life try to strap me or my children down and it would be a cold day in H-E-double-L before they did. I mean, that's why we have anesthesia. Well, you know, 
papoose boards, as you guys were all talking about, um, sometimes can be needed. I personally don't have one in my own office. Why? But because I would rather have the parents hold their children. It's more comforting. But there are some instances in which some dentists do need to use them. Um, children maybe with special needs. Can I ask or... you something, Dr. Young? Sure. How would you feel if you went to the dentist and your dentist strapped you down by your head, your arms, your feet, and your legs and said, oh yeah, we're not using anesthesia. How would that feel to you? Oh, absolutely not. That would not fly. But just to go back to what a papoose board is, it is like a surfboard with wraps for the wrists and legs and the chest, but there is no head component. There are no buckles or, you know, shackles or things like that. Do you think I'm bad? That's what he did. There you see this dentist, Dr. Howard Sch Schneider, out of Jacksonville, physically attacked by female relatives. I think it was a mom of one of his patients. Now, according to the defense attorneys, we don't know what really happened. And just because several children claimed that they were tortured, he says that doesn't make it so. Uh, to you, John Phillips, I know you and Sarah are going forward with these legal documents. How many children are you representing, John? We represent 30. Good gravy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're, All right, McDonough they're... and Dell Brown, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you, Mr. Phillips. Patrick McDonough, you just said three or four children. Hello, Andell Brown. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Andell? I he can just hear said you, Nancy. he I can alone hear you, Nancy. is representing 30 alleged victims. I haven't even got to ask Gus Saras how many he's representing. It's not just four children. It's 30-plus children. What, all of them are lying? I I'm sure all of them are saying that you it's are painful not when Andale you go Brown, to the dentist. Number one. Well, you I'm... are. Go ahead. Nancy, when there's money on the line, I'm sure we can get a line that stretches from here to Montana and back. Are you talking about the money the dentist now made? Everybody else is All trying that to get alleged Medicare fraud. Everybody fog? else is trying to get a piece of this lawsuit. Because Crystal Perrette, let me go to Crystal. If I think that I have done anything that has ended up in my children being upset or hurt. Or, or, or anything, everything that happens to them, I feel like it's my fault, all right? John David right. cut his leg the other day on a rusty bicycle. I, I felt that that was my fault, okay? We were flying up the interstate to try to, uh, on the phone, trying to find out about a tetanus shot, which he already had. But I mean, I, I feel awful and I had nothing to do with it. How are you living with the fact that your son went through so much pain and mommy wasn't there. I mean, I, I, oh, not to say it's your fault because it's not your fault, but it just must right. be excruciating. It's heartbreaking. When did you find out what had happened to your son? When he came, when he came into the recovery room at the hospital. What happened? And that's, that's when his entire face was swollen, lips were swollen, his lips were cut, and every tooth was capped. Oh, my stars. What did you say to the dentist? Did you realize something horrible happened to your baby? I never seen him there. I only dealt with the hospital people that worked there. I never seen him in there. Unless your and lawyers... Go ahead, ma'am. And when it got done, I didn't, I didn't know that maybe, maybe his mouth was sensitive. Maybe he had a reaction to the anesthesia. Maybe this, maybe You're, that. So I, I didn't I'm question. With you. I'm with you, and this is why. We trust doctors and dentists. We think they understand 
I mean, you know, if a child has a cavity, of course the child doesn't want the cavity filled, but it's got to be filled. And that's our job as right. parents to do the right thing. You had no idea. And, you know, Gus Saris and John Phillips, let me go back to you, Phillips. It, this is pain for the mothers and fathers as well. They're the ones who bring the child and hand them over to this doctor if all of this is true. And, what, and, and, and you know, how much are you going to see for? Have you decided? Because this thing, uh, this uh, document here by Mr. Sarah says 15000 Is that all? I mean, did I misread that? That's the statutory minimum to plead. We're, we're proceeding oh, with see. a medical malpractice action and we're gonna wipe them out of business. That is that is our plan. And then to proceed to other doctors. This is an epidemic that people don't know about. Dr. Schneider apparently said, if you keep acting up, you're never gonna see your mommy again. And he uses force on these kids. It's reprehensible. And he straps them down just so that he can treat more kids instead of being honest and treating them with compassion by reading to them or putting a warm blanket or letting mama sit there. You know, if this had happened to my child, I would be on, I would be hell bent on stopping his practice and never letting this happen to another child. Now, I, I will say in his defense, he's saying this did not happen, that he did not torture children, that all of his procedures were necessary, but that's not what these children say, and that's not what these lawyers say.